Coming up next, we have David Richards. I've known him from the Utah Ruby user group. So he's, uh, he's geeky. He proves it every time I talk to him, too. So there you go. I own my nerd. I own my inner nerd. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, maple syrup urine disease and about aliens and jelly beans and uh, statistics. I'm here to talk to you about family questions and uh, how to know what you know. And why? Because uh, we get to participate in life. Maybe not uh, ruining our feet, but we can participate in life. Um, uh, like it or not, we can either be banished or we can, we can take part in life. And uh, nobody wants to be banished, especially from our own lives. Um, after the uh, age of information comes the age of choice. And the only way we can make a choice is if we understand what's going on. And the only way we can understand what's going on is if we participate a little bit. And then we can make our contribution. But let's face it, we're all... Uh, slammed every day with more information that we can handle. Uh, we get a gazillion bits of information and, and guess what? It's only going to get worse. So it pays to figure out a little bit how we're going to get a big picture insight. And that's what family questions are all about, big picture insight. And the hero of our story today is uh, Enrico Fermi, who was a Nobel Prize uh, winning physicist, was known for asking students, his students, questions that they didn't have any right knowing the answers to. Stuff like, how many uh, piano tuners are there in Chicago? Well, it turns out about 125. How many jelly beans would fit in a, a liter jar? About 240. How many extraterrestrial uh, civilizations are there that we might be able to contact in this galaxy? 2.31. Okay, not really, but kind of. Those aren't real answers. Those are answers to Fermi questions. And the reason we do Fermi questions is to get an idea of kind of where are we going whether we want to go there before we go there, get the big picture, look for a little bit of insight. Um, everything's asking for our time, our resources, our money. Uh, we got to know where to, where to play, where to do our, our, our work. And uh, so before we put in those gazillion hours, it helps to know where we're going. So if you want to do something like this, how would you do it? Uh, first, you want to ask maybe the first specific question. Say somebody asks you to, to join their startup. So you might want to ask, well, how much money am I going to make? What are the risks? After you kind of get an idea of what you want to know, start asking simple leading questions. These questions drive us into, uh, you know, what's the risks? What's the market? What's the competitive advantage? You know, what, what, what is it going to take for me? How many hours? You start to ask these questions, and they're supposed to lead to something. You can link them up so that questions from one area kind of lead to more information about the next area and the next area to finally get to your final specific question and get that answered. Once you've added it all up, uh, check your sanity. Is it simple enough? Can you understand it? Did it take more than three or five minutes to get it figured out? Um, can you explain it to an eight-year-old? Uh, that's how you kind of tell if you kind of figured out where you're going. That's kind of the benefit of, that's the big picture insight. Um, another uh, kind of sanity check in the last couple generations, the mathematicians came with something called Monte Carlo analysis. All that basically is, is you take all these leading questions that we had and you throw them in a bag and you deal with the uncertainty a little bit, you figure out, well, what's possible here? And you just try it a gazillion times until you start to see a picture. And um, if there is a picture there, then maybe there's some insight that can be had. And it's just that easy. You can do it on a spreadsheet. There's a lot of programs you can do it with. You can do it pretty simply. Um, if you want to participate in this, you want to start thinking a little bit in ranges. So you don't want to think about absolutes, the highest possible or the lowest possible, but think about maybe nine times out of ten, this is about what you're going to experience. Remember, you're guessing here. You're, you're trying to learn something that you really don't have any right to know, but you need to know. You want to participate in this world. Um, it's important you don't have to get mathy. Okay? If you're getting too detail-oriented, if you're, it's taking more than a few minutes, um, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong. Okay? So keep it simple and, and just look for the, the big picture insight. Um, if you get stuck, there's a little trick you can do. It's just to pull a five, ask five friends, five random samples. Uh, you take the highest and lowest number. Turns out that's a 90% confidence interval. That's what you want when you're, you're adding these numbers up. Uh, when you kind of get your groove on, you start asking questions that you're interested in, and your life changes. You go wild with it. Now, how long will it take us for a cure for cancer? How many people actually have maple syrup urine disease? You know, how many people uh, might buy my product? What kind of insurance do I need? What is this? Uh, information they're telling me over the news. What about all this really cool stuff that, you know, uh, global warming, whatever. It kind of explodes after a while. If you participate in life and you kind of figure it out, it, it gets fun to participate and feel like you maybe can have an opinion that's, that's a little bit informed or at least you're participating a little bit. 
Um, I grabbed a few open source resources. I threw them on the web, Open Mobius, if you want to go there, uh, play, avoid some of the mathy stuff. Um, but I'm David Richards, and I hope